Welcome back to Evermore. It is going to be another time lapse for the majority of this video as I work on a brand new section in the Axolotl Kingdom. I have a lot of digging to do, which is generally the case when working on this underwater city. And the plan for this area is to turn it into a jellyfish forest. Once I've dug this deep enough, I have to go back and terraform all of the edges and clean it up and recolor the seafloor using deep slate. I thought it would make a nicer contrast to have the floor darker because I want to have the jellyfish all glowing. And I'm also using tuff to fade it into the stone along the edges. Oh yeah, I also grew a lot of kelp to add more source blocks to this area because it's much easier to do that than rely on water buckets to create source blocks. In the center of this forest, I did want to include a building of some sort, one that is cleverly disguised as a jellyfish itself. It's a very simple design of a building, similar to some of the others in this city, but designed specifically to look like a jellyfish. At this scale, it turned out rather well, but I do wish I had more space to create a more detailed version of it. Maybe someday. Now for the fun part, I get to add all the little jellies all around this larger jellyfish. It may take some imagination to make a clump of glass look like a jellyfish, but I think they look close enough and I think it gets the point across. I'm not positive, but I don't think you could make a glass jellyfish that resembles a jellyfish smaller than this. I built 99 of these little jellyfishes, 33 of each color, all around the large one in the center, which makes a total of 100 jellyfish in this forest. All I have left to do now is some touch-up work by adding a path to this new area and also adding some additional greenery to liven it up a bit. I tried something I haven't done yet in this axolotl kingdom and that's some custom greenery, albeit a little bit larger than it should be. I think when put in the appropriate places, it doesn't look too bad. I wanted to wall off this area so it looked more like an enclosed space so that it doesn't give too much of the beauty away until you approach it from the right direction. Now that the time lapse is complete, I can show you the build in first person. And I'm just having fun watching all the wildlife down here. We've got some dolphins shoving their face in the wall. We've got a glow squid over there shoving his face in the stone. I also, since the time lapse, have added three dolphin pods, two right here, one on the opposite end of the forest. I want to have a lot of them scattered around. There's already three right in this little section, but it's good convenience to have those around. Anyway, let's go ahead and just start from here and we'll look at it, shall we? We've got our entryway arch, which I don't know if I should put seagrass on top of that. I didn't even think about that till just now. Okay, let's do that. We'll put some there, some there, some over here maybe. There's a bunch of slabs on here, so wherever it can fit. All right, let's pretend like we already had that and we'll start again. Look at that beautiful arch. It would look much uglier if it didn't have that seagrass on top. But now that it does have the seagrass on top, let's swim through it. I took the iron path all the way up to this point and I decided to switch it out for mud to make a little mud path up to the main jellyfish for no particular reason. I just thought it would be nice to keep the ground a little more dull and dark inside the jellyfish forest because the jellyfish glow so much. 
and it does show up a lot better with shaders. And we'll look at it with shaders in a moment, not right away. First, we'll look at it normally, how it is in game. You'll see I tried to frame the entryway to look circular. You have a clear view of the center jellyfish. This kelp all on the front is shorter. I made sure to trim it all so it doesn't get too tall. And then I've got some of the larger kelp along the sides. As long as I don't interfere with this view, that's all that matters because this is the main direction you approach it from. Hello, drowned. And goodbye. Let's approach the center building. You can go inside it, which I will show you. But doesn't this look amazing? I was almost considering adding even more jellyfish, but because it's such a perfect number of 100 jellyfish, I decided to leave it at this. Alright, let's go into the center. You'll see that I've put lights behind this. That's to make it glow at night. And you probably already noticed too the lights I put on the inside. I scattered those around to look like little polka dots almost inside the jellyfish. But it just makes it look really nice. The shaders end at nighttime with the glowing. There's not much in here. It's just a small shaft that goes up into the inside of the jellyfish where we've got some quartz and pearlescent frog lights. There's a double layer of glass on the inside, white with an outer layer of pink. You can't really see much from inside here, but maybe you could with shaders on. So that's the jellyfish building. Over here, there were a bunch of naturally generated caves and I sealed some of them off because there were so many. This dripstone was naturally generated here. But this dripstone I added myself because I thought it looked nice to extend that look over to that area. Just gives you something extra to look at as you're swimming through this. And then this is what I would call the rear entrance. I put another dolphin pot over here and whoops, looks like we're missing a stair block. One second. I am making all kinds of discoveries today. Fixing all these things last minute. All right. So here we've got this dolphin pod. By the way, this is on the outside edge of the axolotl kingdom. There is a conduit right there, and that is on the outer edge. So if I go to the surface, it is raining, so it might be hard to see. But here's how it looks from above the water. Look at those beautiful glowing jellyfish. And then there's another conduit over there. So you can see the outer conduits all around here. I don't know if the whole city is going to go much further past these conduits it can for a little bit as a general rule i'm stopping the city once it reaches these outer conduits that's the quick view of the jellyfish forest i did want to show you one more thing that i plan on doing in the future i don't know when i'm going to do it but this is the plan as of now i have this road splitting in two directions once you come through there and I started to clear a path that goes back in this direction toward the other conduit. And currently there's nothing back here, but I'm thinking about converting this space back here into some kind of drowned village or drowned city. However that would look, I don't know. The terrain around here looks very menacing with the rocks popping up everywhere and the ravine. It seems like a good location for the drowned to live on the outskirts of the city. So that's a plan for the future. As far as other areas to fill in the city, I still have this large area, and I'm sure there's lots of other places I can add things. Even in this front area, I feel like it's missing stuff. It just looks kind of boring around here. I want to make it more interesting, have more small details everywhere, but I'm adding just a little bit at a time. If you can think of any other ideas, I have a small idea board. I haven't really done anything from there yet because I've just been trying to add buildings and structures more. Eventually I want to get into adding more organics and creatures around the city. The jellyfish forest is a good start to that, but I will want to do more of those eventually once I have more buildings and the actual city structures laid out. I really like how different this section is. It adds a lot more color and is so, so pretty, especially with shaders. I'm going to show you that now. Oh, and it's perfect to do it at night, too, because then the sky is all dark and stars being out makes it look that much better. The sea pickles on the floor also look amazing. I made sure to do no more than two in each spot so it doesn't take away from the brightness of the jellyfish. 
But doesn't that look so pretty? I love it so much. And once I added the kelp along the outside, that helped it a great deal to make it look more closed off and more like a little forest that these guys live in. You'll also notice that I kept all of the greenery closer to the edges, and then toward the center where this large jellyfish is, I kept the grass to a minimum or non-existent because I wanted it to be very cleared in the center so that it doesn't distract from the jellyfish shape. And of course, you've got the occasional glow squid also making their appearance down here, which also adds to the ambience. And then we've got our dolphin pod on the end. Here's how it looks from the back, but I do think the front view looks much better. And there it is, my attempt at a jellyfish forest in survival Minecraft. You can take inspiration from this and try it in your own world. The jellyfish are not very complicated to build. I just included three tentacles on each one and had a cluster of glass around a frog light. I used three different frog lights for all the different colors. That way they kind of go along with the color scheme of each one. It turned out really nice. I didn't know what to expect when trying this idea, but I do like how it looks all put together. Kind of mesmerizing. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Evermore. Bye!